Hi, welcome to the Hungarian Living Podcast. I'm your host, Elizabeth Sabo Voss. Our goal is to discover, celebrate, and share Hungarian heritage and encourage you to do it too. We'll touch on food, travel, history, music, and language, and share stories from our listeners. We're glad you're here. This is a podcast where we'll encourage you to dig deeper to learn about your Hungarian heritage in a variety of ways. We'll have thought-provoking conversations and share resources. So whether you know a little or a lot about being Hungarian, this is the place to be. Welcome to this episode of the Hungarian Living Podcast. Today I'm visiting with Anna Hamp, one of our Hungarian language instructors, and we're going to talk about a project that Anna and I have been working on over the last six months, Hungarian dialogue sessions. So welcome, Anna. Thanks so much for having me. So tell us a little bit about yourself, where you live, and how long you've lived in the U.S., and, and what you do in your work. Well, I was born and raised in Budapest, Hungary, and I went to university there. I got two master's degrees, one in linguistics and one in English language and literature. And um, after I met my husband, who is American, I moved to the United States, and that was almost 19 years ago. And we moved to California initially, lived in California for 14 years, and then moved to Colorado almost six years ago. So we've been here for a while. And I teach for work. I teach languages, English and Hungarian. I, I've been teaching for 27 years. And um, I've taught at several universities and colleges in the United States. I only teach adults. I want to say that. I don't teach children. I only teach adults. So I currently teach at the University of Colorado in Boulder. And then I also have my own company with a colleague called Workforce English. And we teach uh, work-related English language to immigrants and refugees in the United States. And then I also teach Hungarian through Magyar marketing courses. So I have a beginner class and two intermediate classes and advanced class. And then I teach these dialogue sessions that we're going to talk about today. Okay, so you are an English teacher, but Hungarian was your first language. Yes, and it still is. <laughs> so I, um, I have all my family is still in Hungary, so I go visit as much as I can. And then my three kids were born here in the United States, but I speak Hungarian with them here at home. So, but my husband is American. He understands quite a bit of Hungarian, but he doesn't really speak it. So, you know, our language at the dinner table is English, but I do speak Hungarian with my kids. Okay, neat. So what are some of the challenges in teaching Hungarian as a second language to adults? Well, I think one of the challenges is time. Most adults decide to learn Hungarian as a hobby, maybe because they have some connection, usually because they have some connection to um, Hungary um, through their parents, grandparents, or other relatives, but they have jobs, they have families, they have other engagements. So time is always a challenge, I think, for most learners. They're able to come to class, but many times actually completing homework requires a lot more time and effort. Another challenge is that Hungarian is a very different language. So many people have studied Spanish or German or French, but Hungarian is not related to any of these Indo-European languages. So People have to be flexible and just um, accept that some things are going to be different and there may not be an explanation <laughs> as to why it's different. But it's also been really fun despite the challenges. I, I have really enjoyed teaching um, my students Hungarian this past six months. Well, good. Well, we've certainly enjoyed having you a part of the team. <laughs> So as many of the podcast listeners know, I have spent a fair bit of time learning Hungarian over far too many years. In the past, my commitment to studying Hungarian was pretty hit or miss because I am a person who needs a buddy to do some things for motivation, but also for accountability. So I consider learning Hungarian to kind of be a team sport, maybe, because it isn't super effective for me to learn it in isolation. I don't live in a Hungarian area, so the Hungarian conversation isn't something that is just right in front of me. But now that so much of life seems to be happening online, it actually has opened up 
more possibilities for me to make a connection with other Hungarian speakers and learners and practice, which is great. So I, I've always wanted to go back to studying Hungarian with a small group of people. And I hadn't really considered online learning for Hungarian previously because I couldn't really conceptualize how it could work. But one thing led to another with 2020, and here we are. And through this process, I was able to make a connection with Anna. So Anna, I appreciate you being one of our instructors for our regular weekly Hungarian language lessons, but also that you were open to exploring the concept of dialogue sessions with me. We have over 80 people participating in either our weekly Hungarian language lessons or in our dialogue sessions, and some people are doing both. So it's super exciting to see the interest in learning Hungarian, and I'm definitely not alone in this language learning adventure. So that's pretty fun. So Anna, did you imagine there would be so many people excited about learning Hungarian in the United States? No, not really. <laughs> and actually, that's one of the questions I get when I tell friends and family that I'm now teaching Hungarian. They're like, but to whom? <laughs> Who wants to learn Hungarian? <laughs> And so it's fun to tell them that the students come from all over the United States and even Canada. Um, as I said, I live in Colorado, but none of my students live in Colorado. So I'm very grateful for the technology that allows me to do this and to teach people sure. from all over. And so, yeah, I guess I never imagined that so many people would be interested. But when you take the you know, United States population and especially those that have some connection to Hungary, there are a lot of people. So it's not surprising when you really think about it. It's just that, like you said, nobody ever considered doing this uh, fully online before. Right. Yes. And I think, you know, the whole pandemic has forced many things to go online. And this is actually one of the huge benefits from that, even though it's a frustrating situation in, in many respects. So what is one of the things you enjoy about teaching adult learners of Hungarian? So I, I love the language, so I always enjoy sharing my love of this language with other people. But I also really love it when something clicks for one of my students. So since many of them grew up hearing Hungarian, they sometimes have these phrases that they've always heard. And then all of a sudden in my class, they realize like, oh, that's what that means or that's how that's put together. So that's always really fun when after decades of of sort of knowing something, they realize what it really is and they can start mm -hmm. using it more confidently. Yes. I, I've had a few of those aha moments myself. So That's great. <laughs> I'm sure I, I'm sure as an instructor it's fun to to watch that wow yeah. moment. So so let's talk a little bit about our dialogue sessions. How would you describe them to someone who wants a little more information on these Hungarian conversation opportunities? Well, um, it's basically an hour a week of speaking uh, by using a guided dialogue that helps people see common vocabulary in action in the correct form. So um, participants uh, repeat the same dialogues over and over again in pairs and then switch to a different partner and a different dialogue. And basically the idea is that they get the opportunity to practice their role, to speak the language out loud, and to learn set phrases and expressions that they can use in the future. And so this works even if they don't completely understand the nuances of grammar or if they wouldn't be able to put those sentences together by themselves, it's put together for them. And then there are some variations that they can add in if they feel comfortable. And then they also get tips on pronunciation from me as I listen to them practicing. Yes. And the participants receive the dialogue for the week via email so they can print it out and they read the written dialogue ahead of time. And they also receive an audio file with the correct pronunciation for the dialogues for that week. And so they can listen to that. And then for those who would really like to take advantage of the learning opportunity, they can work on translating the sentences before we meet as a group where it is all explained. So, it, you know, it's really packed with a lot of possibilities to engage with the language by reading, listening, speaking, and then becoming familiar with the new words and phrases. Yeah. And currently we actually have two levels of this. So the beginner level has no prerequisites other than being able to read Hungarian which anyone can learn in an hour or two, or if they take uh, one of the, the classes that 
you offer, then they learn it within the first week or two. So that beginner level has basic phrases and expressions. And then we have a more intermediate level that uses more advanced vocabulary, some more complicated grammar, and just longer sentences and dialogues in general. And I would add, too, that it's always a fun group of people. Yes. Um, we have participants. You know, pe- people from all around the world, and U.S. and Canada, and it and they're fun. I mean, we we always end end up having a great time, and it's a fun way to practice Hungarian with others, particularly if you don't live near anyone else who's learning Hungarian. Yeah. So, shall we do a little demonstration of one of the dialogues so the listeners can sure. better understand what we're yeah. talking about? Okay. So, how about the one where you visit family for um, a family dinner? Okay. All right. All right. So I'll be the hostess. Okay. Éhesek vagytok? Kész az ebéd. Igen, szeretnék enni. Hova újjak? Ide légy szíves. Jó étvágyat. Köszönöm. Jó étvágyat neked is. Kérek szépen egy kis sok. Tessék, itt van a só. Kérsz még levest? Igen, kérek. Nagyon finom. Inni kérsz még? Igen, kérek. Van még bor? Persze, tessék. Nagyon finom volt minden. Örülök, egészségedre. Köszönöm a vendéglátást. Nagyon szívesen. Jó utat haza. You sounded great, Liz. We sounded great. <laughs> I felt like you were at well, my house having dinner. <laughs> I would love to be at your house having dinner. <laughs> that would be super fun. <laughs> Yeah. So that's an example of the conversation. And like I said, you know, you get the conversation in print, but you also get it uh, in an audio file so that you can listen and, and review it multiple times, as many times as you want to before we get together. But really, when we get together, we we all mispronounce things. I mean, that's just that's a part of learning. And so it's it's just awesome to have the opportunity to practice a little bit more. So if you're interested in either our regular Hungarian lessons or these dialogue sessions that we talked about today on the podcast, be sure to get in contact with me. Uh, I will have links in the show notes as well as the dialogue we used as a demonstration today. You are welcome to come and join one dialogue session to see what it is like. And if you think it would be beneficial to your learning, you can sign up for the rest of the sessions for that month. There is no obligation to give it a try. So we would love to meet you and have you experience it firsthand. So Anna, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. Thank you, Liz. It's been fun working with you these past several months. It's been so amazing to work with you. And I must say, you are one of my treasures from 2020. Aww. There were so many different disappointments and life changes that being able to make a connection with you and partner with you, particularly with these dialogue sessions, has been very fun. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you. So so we hope to see you at a dialogue session sometime soon. Yes. I'd love to meet more people and share my passion of Hungarian with them. Perfect. Hope to see you soon. Hungarian Living is a division of Mudyar Marketing, the Hungarian store where you can find meaningful gifts with Hungarian style. Check us out at mudyarmarketing.com. And special thanks to Stephen Chichek and the Animal Cannibals for the show music. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode of Hungarian Living, please subscribe and share this podcast with your favorite Hungarian. Check out our show notes for links to resources mentioned in this episode. If you have a question or comment, email us at podcast at hungarianliving.com. We'll catch you next time.